Welcome to Econo Chat. Let's talk business with Mr. Daniel Steinman and myself as your hostess, Elsa B. Uh, I hope that you have had a wonderful week, Mr. Daniel Steinman. Smashing. Smashing. Uh, would you mind telling us why smashing? I went to Urania Munt this past weekend for the first time in my life. I've never been there. And it was an eye opener. Wow. I couldn't believe what I saw. Huh. Yeah, and that also prompted me to talk about the diamond industry. Mm. Yeah, because it's everywhere. Okay, uh, okay. Oranya Mund is diamonds. Diamonds, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's where we But I, I didn't realize it was such a beautiful little town and such a beautiful environment. Mm. And mm. I also didn't realize that the Orange River there is so big. Yeah, it I is. I thought it was just beautiful. A, a stream. It's beautiful. Yeah, but can you imagine it? Never in my entire life have I been to Oranyamun. Well, there's a lot of Namibians that have not been there. So I, uh, we will let this one slide. Yeah, right. It's, it's but we need to talk. Let, let's talk about uh, the diamonds. Yes, uh, yes, yes. The prospects of diamonds. What I saw in Oranya Munt is very positive. Mm. What I see in the reports about the market is not so positive. Mm. So I, I sense this slight discrepancy between what's going on on the ground and by that I mean the production side. So okay. Remember Oranya Munt, the people in Oranya Munt, the um, the administrative function that is housed in that town, it does not concern itself with market conditions. Mm. How the diamonds get polished is, is nobody's concern in Oranya Munt. Whom they are sold to is also not no there. One. Their thing is getting them out of the sea mm. or digging them up from below the sand. So the, the whole approach to the market in Oranje Munt is a production approach. Mm. The moment you come to Windhoek, you get a different angle. Mm. You are exposed to international developments and you are exposed to the bureaucratic side of, of diamond marketing. Mm. And it is here where I, where I sense a weakness. But let's first go back for a moment to Oranje Munt. It's unbelievable. You know, you can see Alexander by the town on the South African side from this side. But it must be about the lagoon there. Yeah. It's so wide. It's about five kilometers mm. across that lagoon. You know, at one point I said to my wife, it doesn't flow as fast, but visually it looks like the Zambezi. Mm. You know, it's a big, massive river there at the end. Um, and they just got about 18 months ago I think it was beginning of 2022 they commissioned the Lady Kovambo mm. the new diamond mining yeah, vessel yeah. the mm. fifth one in the um, Namdep stable which increased their production by about 20% now you need to pay attention very closely because what I'm going to tell you is difficult to, to fathom it means that from a revenue level or a revenue perspective, Namdep and all the other ancillary businesses in Oranjemund and in that part of the diamond production chain, they are doing very well. Mm. They are producing carrots um, like mad and also with, with um, the Lady Kovambo now, it is a more robust diamond mining vessel. vessel. So mm. it can mine where other vessels couldn't mine. Mm. It can mine up to 300 meters water depth, which the other ones cannot do. Mm. You know, so it, in practice, it means that it is accessing virgin diamond fields that have not been disturbed previously. Mm. And that means you get all the big stones. Yeah. And Namibia is known for gem quality diamonds. Mm. Mm. And it's the big stones those stones above 10 carats that that catches everybody's attention now we come to Windhoek there's this more than more than a million carats I think currently it's about 1.4 million carats mined by Namdeb in a year if you if you put all the 
um, diamond miners together, it's about one and a half million carats of diamonds um, in a year, of which about 15% is the is the type of diamond that they would love to mine every day, yeah, but yeah. which only comes along quite rarely, you mm. know, maybe once a month or mm. once in two months or so. so. And I'm talking about, from that perspective, stones bigger than five carats. Mm. But not only that, um, Namdeb is very well known for for uh, various types of stones, mm. pinks and blues and even blacks yeah. and um, light greens. Mm. And I, I didn't know you, you, you get all different <laughs> kinds of... of, of um, it's color stone. Because, uh, remember, it's just a diamond. Mm. It's, it's carbon. Yeah. Pure carbon. <laughs> but... Um, and if I understood the, the geologist correctly, the way that the carbon is put together or the way where it was formed in the earth creates these, these color patterns. Mm. And that's what, they, what they're looking for. Mm. So when we come back, we will continue this uh, discussion. Uh, we will probably look at the state of the market. Uh, now that you've given us the history uh, to just look at the state of the market. Uh, but uh, for that, let's quickly go for a short break and we'll be back after these.